Today's video is brought to you by Geology. I know, you're like, Muda, those under eye circles. I know, y'all keep giving me crap for it day after day. They've got amazing award-winning eye cream that they told me. They were like, this, this gonna help you. Geology is a nine-time award-winning men's skincare company recognized by Men's Health, Esquire, and Aspen Grooming Awards. With over 5,000 five-star reviews, Geology creates simple, effective skincare routines customized just for you. Ladies and gentlemen, all you gotta do is go to their site, click the link, take a 30 second diagnostic quiz and with a few checks they'll actually look at you grade your skin grade your uh, routine and then a team of dermatologists will design a regimen specifically just for you and not only that the logistics department will ship that regimen to you ladies and gentlemen the experience is incredibly simple again i don't think about this stuff too much but when i got a team working for it absolutely amazing we're talking about how great the product generally is some of my favorite stuff is the body wash i like smelling nice and of course Let's not undersell the face washes and the under eye cream. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can start with a complete trial set, five pieces valued at 50 bucks. You get two everyday face washes, vital morning face cream, repairing night cream, and nourishing eye cream. Ladies and gentlemen, head over to geology.com, take their free skincare quiz, and save up to 70% off on your 30-day trial. Even better, join their new Geology Galaxy community for more daily tips, giveaways, and more at discord.gg geology. Thanks to Geology for sponsoring today's video. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I want to talk about a big W for emulation. Now as you all know, I'm an emulation lover, okay? I get into fights all the time with Nintendo fans, PlayStation fans, Xbox fans. When I tell them like a Jehovah's Witness that the PC platform is the greatest when it comes to preserving your favorite video games. Look, at the end of the day, hardware dies, uh, hard drives die, you know, graphic cards die, CPUs die, marriages die, but what doesn't die is software that flies through the magical world of the internet. And of course, uh, when it comes to computer hardware, yeah, it dies too, but you can always build a new computer. Hell, nowadays, emulation, you can even run it on grandma's vibrator if you felt like it. Some, some emulators are really palatable. But of course, there's entire devices like the Steam Deck that have an entire market that's dedicated to emulators. Now, of course, emulation is strong and emulation is love because people like to play old experiences. One of the hardest, toughest takes that I've heard on the internet is, Boo! Who plays old games? Old games suck L! And the entire answer to that is, no, old games do not suck. Timeless experiences, when done right, can be played in any generation. Look, every console generation has games that I think people love to play time and time again. Look, back in the days of the NES, you had Mega Man. In the SNES, you had Chrono Trigger. I would mention Nintendo games, but they got like sniper rifles ready to go, so I'm not even going to talk about emulating uh, <laughs> Nintendo titles. Whew. But of course, then moving on, you've got, you know, the PlayStation 1 with Metal Gear Solid, Tomba 2, Siphon Filter, you name it. But of course... PlayStation 2 rolls around, and you've got games like Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, a game that is pretty much locked to consoles. It is one of the best stealth games ever made, and of course, it's tied exclusively to a console that unfortunately is dying, dying out, and it's harder to find as time goes on. But of course, this video is all about the PlayStation 3 emulation. In fact, I would like to say we live in a time of the console emulation wars. Yes, back in the day when we used to fight between PlayStation 3 or Xbox, like actual little soldiers. I'm proud to say that uh, emulation is kind of bringing up that spark again. But ladies and gentlemen, the RPCS3 compatibility list proudly boasts 0% nothing and loadable, which means every single piece of PlayStation 3 software can now run under an emulator. And that's good. To talk about it, one of the important reasons why I wanted to bring this up was games like Metal Gear Solid 4. Now, MGS4 is one of my favorite PlayStation 3 games ever made. It's also the PlayStation 3 game that's exclusively locked down to that system. Now, when it comes to backwards compatibility and emulation, officially, there is only one company right now that's, or two companies that are really doing it. You've got Nintendo with their Switch Online service, but you've also got Microsoft, who allow you to put certain Xbox 360 or Xbox original games in your Xbox Series devices, One devices, and play backwards compatible titles. 
Now, they don't support every game because basically what you're doing is you're sticking your disc in, it's downloading an equivalent emulated version off of their service, and the only way that they're able to achieve this is if they get the licensing from those original services. So again, this can only depend on certain games too. For instance, games like Grand Theft Auto have soundtracks that are licensed. But of course, games that go 10, 15, 20 years past their time, those licenses expire. And if companies like Rockstar Games isn't paying for those licenses to be renewed, well, they either have to stop releasing the game or gut those songs out. Now, of course, Rockstar recently did this for the Definitive Edition where songs like Billie Jean were cut out, the 90s rap stations from San Andreas were removed. Effectively, a chunk of those games' original atmosphere was removed just so that the company could save a few bucks. And uh, Rockstar Games, you don't need to save a few bucks. You make a lot of it through GTA Online anyways. Come on, spend some cash every once in a while for preserving your old titles. Now, of course, games like GTA 4, for instance, have amazing radio stations like Vladivostok. Now, of course, uh, you could say that if you played the game on its release date, but ladies and gentlemen, GTA 4 was the one game to get effectively spayed and neutered Price is Right style when it came to those specific radio stations. Now, sure, you could mod them back in, but you could even emulate the PS3 version of GTA 4 and play the original soundtrack and the original experience like God intended. Now, of course, a few weeks ago, I made a video where I emulated GTA 5 on my PC. And uh, while I like this, I, I like doing that, a lot of people actually asked in the comments, what is the point? There's a PC version of the game. At this moment, you're just making a video to be stupid. But there's a point to this, and the point is that it's an original version of the game. GTA 5 is so old that even the soundtrack within it is getting called and removed. So of course, if you have an emulated version of it, you can still get an original 1.0 pristine experience, which no company can take away from you. Look, backwards compatibility depends on the goodwill of the publishers and of course the gaming companies behind it, especially third-party games. Metal Gear Solid 4 could run on a PS4 or a PS5 if Sony wanted to write an emulator for those devices. I'm sure they've racked their brains around it and maybe it's not worth it for them financially to do so, which sucks. You also have to rely on Konami, who currently right now cares about video games from a Silent Hill perspective, but if you're a Metal Gear fan, Good luck, okay? You're still stuck out in the rain. Thankfully to emulation technologies, I was able to play Metal Gear Solid 4 again, which I play through every year at 4K at up to 60 frames per second. Now, the reason I did this was A, I moved, so I didn't want to dig out the PlayStation 3 just for one game. I figured if I have all this high-end hardware, why not use it to emulate a pretty awesome game? Now, years ago, when I thought of emulating MGS4, it was a tough ask because the game was one of the hardest games to emulate on the PlayStation 3. In fact, just the experience of emulating it really was a tough, daunting task. For instance, I had to find a special build of the emulator made by a community member known as Illusion. There's also Cypher XOF, which I was able to use to run the game all the way to the end. Without doing this, I could run through the original main version of RPCS3, but I was running through a few freezes and crashes. So I downloaded a special build. I had to back up my Metal Gear Solid 4 game, which I did years ago when I was showing this emulator on live streams. I then plugged that ISO file I backed up legally. And again, I wanna stress for the fact, back up your games. Look, one of the hardest takes that I ever have to deal with is, Muda, you promote piracy every time you emulate a Nintendo game, Sakurai cries. Yeah, I, how? If I'm backing them up, if I'm paying for them, how? You know what? I should legally be allowed, okay, to play the game on electronic anal beats if I pay money for it, okay? If you disagree, fine. We agree to disagree. But that's pretty much where I stand on this. Obviously, for Metal Gear Solid 4, I backed the game up. I had to compile two hours of, of code for the game just so I could emulate it start to finish without any interruptions. Because Metal Gear Solid 4 is such a tough, a uh, specialized game for the PlayStation 3 cell architecture, which is absolutely god-horrid architecture, by the way, too, in terms of complexity, 
And also, MGS4 does emulate a PlayStation 1 game within it, which causes a whole heap of issues. But once I waited through the compilation, I fuddled around with the settings a fair bit, I was able to get a very, very amazing experience. I was able to play through MGS4 with a DualSense controller on a Linux system. For crying out loud, these are weird levels of emulation we are reaching. But of course, to understand, I was able to play the game through start to finish, and it was an absolutely enjoyable experience. I think one of the bigger examples of how amazing emulation technology has come is even if you look at MGS4, Metal Gear Solid had an online component that got shut down somewhere around 2013, 2014, and since then it's been unavailable. Well, thanks to the community with projects like Metal Gear Online 2 PC or Metal Gear Online 2 Reborn, you can actually emulate the online component of Metal Gear Solid 4. Now granted the player base isn't massive, I played with like a player base of like 50 users, which at that point you're either getting steamrolled or you're steamrolling. Point is, if you wanted to replay a unique multiplayer experience from back in the day, using RPCS3, and again a custom build of it, we were able to get into a game where you could actually play through people with RPCS3, or surprisingly cross-play it as far as I understand to actual PlayStation 3 users as well. Look, this is just one big boon to the entire world of preservation. A lot of multiplayer components get lost forever because no company wants to keep servers up forever, but with the community, even if you have a player base of 30, 40, 50, maybe 100, it's amazing to see that communities can actually have competition still being held and revive a multiplayer component that very few people actually even care about. Again, it's just one big plus. And of course, through the emulation, it's gotten so mature that not only can we emulate the game, but we can emulate the online connectivity even between actual hardware and virtualized uh, environments like RPCS3. But this got me really looking at emulating games from the seventh generation even harder. Look, there's a lot of games that are tied specifically to this console generation. If you look at things like Xbox 360, which is another set of emulation, Xenia is the actual Xbox 360 emulator, which, while not as mature as RPCS3, is quite impressive in its own right. Look, there are games like Red Dead Redemption. Now, Red Dead Redemption is a game that is exclusively on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Now, to understand, Red Dead 2 is one of the most sold games ever. It's one of the most beloved games ever made. It's also a prequel to the story of Red Dead Redemption. So imagine if you're a PC gamer, you buy Red Dead 2 on a Steam sale and you're like, damn, this game is really fun. I cried at the end. I want to see where the story leads. Dun 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 dun! Guess what? Because of source code issues and problems at Rockstar Games, this game is exclusively tied down to the consoles. Now, if you're on the PlayStation side, good luck. Uh, PS4 and PS5 do not natively support it. And sure, you might be like, but Muda, I can play through it on the cloud. No. When you've got Z Xbox, all right, Microsoft, who basically through their Fusion emulator, the ability for you to play old Xbox 360 games on the actual um, uh, on the actual Xbox One hardware, you have to rely on their goodwill. Who knows if 10 years down the road, that game is still going to be released under Microsoft's wing. Who knows? But of course, with emulation, Xenia can play the game at higher frame rates and higher resolutions all the way to the credit screen. So if you're a PC gamer and you got the strong enough hardware, which, if you can run Red Dead 2 comfortably, you can run Xenia pretty comfortably too. You can play through Red Dead Redemption 1 and finish the story, the saga of the entire franchise, in one go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's again through Xenia and emulation of today's day and age you can play certain games like it. Games like Gears of War, which, yeah, if you're a Gears of War nut, you can play Gears of War 1 on the PC. Uh, and then, uh, what happened to 2 and 3? Those are still Xbox 360 exclusives! There's no PC port! Yeah, you can actually use emulation to play through 2 and 3, then play 4 and 5. If you want to play Fable 2, the best Xbox, the best Fable game ever made, you can now play through it on emulation, because if you can't, it's exclusively tied to the 360 generation. I think one more applicable thing is, I mentioned MGS4, but a better parallel would be Bloodborne. 
Now, a lot of people want Bloodborne on the PC, okay? There's a lot of people who are willing to give their left nut for this game on the entire system. And it's kind of wild to see how Sony is releasing games like Days Gone, Uncharted 4, Uncharted Lost Legacy, both Spider-Man games, and Returnal, and God of War, but not a single peep of Bloodborne. Is there any good reason why Bloodborne isn't out on PC? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the engine seems like it's pretty much shot for shot Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Uh, I I'm sure From has the assets, but uh, why isn't it on the PC? Is it because there's no Bloodborne 2 announcement and Sony can't be like the internet dealer and get you hooked in onto like the first series of games, the first parts, just so they can get you to buy the second part on the actual PlayStation systems? You ever wonder how Sony releases Horizon Zero Dawn, but not Forbidden West? It's so that players who play on the PC are like, damn, I really want to continue the story, but they're not giving it on the PC. <laughs> Yeah, they gotta go out and buy PlayStation 5s or 4s just to continue the experience. You see how they get you in? They give you a, they give you a little bit of <laughs> And then they hook you in right there. Wild, wild company. But of course, Bloodborne, which could exist on the PC, just doesn't. And the fact that Bloodborne doesn't even exist on the PC wouldn't be so bad had Sony not even bothered to update the game or from update the game on PS5. To this day, Bloodborne is locked at its standard resolution, standard frame rate, and its frame pacing issues since launch. So with the power of emulation, you could theoretically get the game running at higher resolutions, proper frame rates, if you could back it up onto the PC. And that would also preserve what I would say is the best from software game exclusively uh, on the PlayStation right over to the PC. So ladies and gentlemen, looking at it even closer, PlayStation 4 emulation is now the next future. Because at this point, we've literally emulated together. I've shown you me running Sonic Mania on my computer. But wouldn't it shock you to know that there are more PlayStation 4 emulators now? For instance, FPS4, FPS, F4, whatever the heck it's called now, the names are a bit confusing. Emulators like Orbital, Spine are now out there that can run even games that are in three dimensions with somewhat reasonable frame rates on the PC. But of course, this is the infancy. Now, of course, running it PlayStation 3 games emulated is a pretty tough ask. I know for a lot of people, they'll be like, but Muda, you need really high-end hardware. And you know what? Years ago, when it came to PlayStation 2 games, one could say the same. But of course, computer hardware gets cheaper and more efficient over time. So whereas PlayStation 3 emulation is kind of the ask for higher-end users of today, there's nothing that can doubt in my mind it could run on even cell phones down the road. Look, it's wild to even tell people that PlayStation 2 games can run on Android smartphones, believe it or not. But of course, emulation is the ultimate preservation tool that we have. And of course, it's interesting to see how PlayStation 3 has succeeded so far, but now we're looking at PlayStation 4 emulation going on forward. Heck, it's to the point that Nintendo Switch emulation is so good that I wouldn't even be shocked when Breath of the Wild 2, or sorry, Tears of the Kingdom launches sometime this year, that it'll actually be playable week one of the actual release date on Ryujinx and Yuzu. Not saying that I promote that because I don't want to get shot in the head by Nintendo lawyers, but uh, emulation is the only thing that'll preserve these experiences. Look, at the end of the day, as a gamer, the most important thing is preserving the experience, not fighting over the plastic box we use to experience those things. Look, at the end of the day, there will always be a new shiny PlayStation, a new shiny Xbox, and a new Nintendo system. But those experiences that we have grown to know and love, the experiences that matter so much for a lot of gamers out there, need to ultimately be preserved, just for the future generations, and also so me and you can replay those experiences down the road too. Look, there will always be a new generation of gamers. But I don't want to live in a world where that generation isn't able to play games like Earthbound, Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 4, Bloodborne, the original GTA 4, the original Vice City with Billie Jean, and not this fucking weird definitive edition clay model mix with all the soundtrack neutered. Yeah, I would like a world where that is, where that is the norm. But ladies and gentlemen, in order to do that, it's up to the gaming community and the talented people who develop these emulators to ultimately thrive and survive and produce these experiences all for us. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to talk about the big W for emulation. I wanted to make a pretty substantial video to catch us up. And the next time I'll be talking about this, hopefully, is when Bloodborne and PT is playable on the PC. 
But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am.